Hello, welcome and welcome back. This is Jacob and today we are going to be continuing the Let's Play for Reverse 1999. Alright, time to head into Chapter 3 and check what the hell is happening in Noelia Texte Pureo. Hopefully I said it correctly, I did look it up, it is in French. Uh, and uh, more on that in a second, but uh, anybody speaking French can correct me <laughs> if I did actually learn this, uh, learn to say this properly. And speaking of, guys, as always, thank you very much on all the likes and uh, comments that you guys leave behind and tips and tricks and stuff like that, and also corrections. So, with that said, <laughs> on the previous part, uh, as said by at uh, Gardibro761, who pretty much informed me of my <clears throat> very interesting pronunciation of uh, the name for, well, this character. Uh, well, the term, or rather the way I was saying it, pretty much just sounded straight up like uh, the offensive term used, or rather uh, referred to lesbians. Uh, so first off, let me apologize for that. <laughs> I was aware, by the way, uh, of that word. However, for some stupid reason, it didn't connect in my brain when I was saying it. So, uh, thank you for reminding me and thank you for pointing that out. That would have been very awkward going uh, going forward with this, uh, with this Let's Play. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and yeah, of course, English is not my first language. Uh, it is Croatian and it is technically also German at the same time. Uh, but uh, yeah, you live and learn, of course. And uh, while you did provide me with a more correct version of how to say it, uh, there was another comment who, I would say, gave the actual correct uh, correct way of pronouncing the name from uh, at Dasvi2018, who said pretty much that the name for her is stemming from the Greek word for trial, which pretty much when you say it aloud just sounds like Vicky, in, in Greek at least, uh, which is very cutesy. And you know what? Considering her usual demeanor and stature, uh, having that kind of a cutesy sounding name, yes, I'm all for it. But most importantly, when I say it in that way, the first thing that comes to my mind, and that is pretty much because I lived at the beginning of the 90s in, the Ger in Germany uh, and grew up there for, for a brief period of time, it reminds me of Vicky the Vikinga. So anybody who knows that old ass cartoon, <laughs> you are welcome that I provided some nostalgia. Uh, that, that was part of my... Silence. Apologizing. <clears throat> that was um, part of my childhood. But yeah, anyway, thank you for the correction and the correct pronunciation for the name. From now on, Vicky. Uh, but yeah, anyway, there is a couple of other things, but before we do any of that, there is something that I missed in the previous chapter, but oh, and also, there is this thing. I saw this being pointed out as well. Uh, I haven't clicked on it. I don't know if I can click on it, but we will keep that for uh, for now. Before we head into anything else, on the previous episode, I did have pretty much, uh, or we had a little discussion, me and you, a couple of you guys, about uh, the trailer for Chapter 3. Now, I will not be watching the trailer right now. I will be watching the trailer instead when we are done completely with Chapter 3 its story, and then in retrospect we're gonna watch that at the end just to... Or rather, I just wanna see what they put in the trailer. I wanna have a clean, clean, uh, clean, non, non-spoilery, non-knowledge of what is coming in that trailer. However, I had something else pointed out, and that is another character trailer. And, uh, this character trailer, on initial seeing the name, didn't really spark interest, but then I saw... Coffee. I saw that the guy is a nerd for coffee, that comment, and I was like... Well... Um... <sighs> Sorry. I said coffee. I needed to sip coffee. Anyway, if that is the truth, we are gonna be watching the character trailer right now for X. So, I am ready. As always, I haven't seen this thing. I do not know what it entails. I just adjusted the volume, and that is about it. So, 
let's begin with the character trailer of X. And considering it was recommended by uh, the usual person, aka Rufflecopter, who so far hasn't spoiled me on anything, so I trust you on this one. <laughs> I Hopefully this doesn't have any spoilers in it. But uh, if it's just funny, let's see what it is. Let's begin. Go! Go! Jesus! Retreat. Damn! Get that airship moving! <sighs> so, the target of Manus Vindicte is the airship. But they've only sent a bunch of dummies who can hardly accomplish anything. Take all the supplies, the flour and everything. Don't forget the coffee beans. Huh? <laughs> Stop right there, you brutal criminal. <laughs> oh, now he's... <laughs> Why don't you listen to the smart guy here? Give up your plan and leave. Okay? What? This is a gliding airship powered by Arcanum. To start it up, the whole city's electricity will be cut off for five hours. I don't care what you have to do. Get this thing moving. All right, at your service. Ooh. Let the butterfly flap its wings and bring us the hurricane we need. That eye has like a mechanical cog in there. Damn. Her ship exploded? What have you done? Rip. It's just another way to activate it. Now say thank you, butterfly. Damn, son. So, your next research is about fried chicken? <laughs> what? The inspiration came from the explosion. Introducing the breadcrumb spraying dispenser. An invention which will bring the flavor of your food to a significant level. Uh-huh. Hmm. Holy shit, this is some crunchy ass chicken. Oh, what wasn't that? Hold on. Hold on, go back. Hmm. I can actually read this, what the hell? Holy shit, I can actually read this. This is in high definition. Okay, hold on. I want to have some background noise. Alright, background noise acquired. Uh, first off, my man. I know I said I was very sus of this guy. But you know what? I can be sus of him, but I can also like him. <laughs> very much so. Purely, purely because of the coffee thing now. Also, fried chicken. Damn, yes. Please. Uh, now what the hell is this? Hold on, I need to I need to zoom myself closer to the to the screen. Sorry about the squeaks of the mic. Okay, let's see. The moon. Tuesday, autumn, 1966. The blimp is called the X2. All right. What happened to the X1? Or is that the one that burned? Uh, water, land, and air autonomous blimp. A young engineering genius. From Jonas Adenor of the Crescent of Munich. Of the Crescent of Munich, okay. On this Monday morning, a mysterious blimp device landed on the middle lawn of the Munich Park. After five hours of waiting in silence, the inventor started the first flight uh, uh, test. Sorry, the inventor started the first flight test in the afternoon. This marvelous machine has amazing speed and an intelligent self-driving system, but apparently uh, these are not yet the best part. The onlookers have different opinions after witnessing its unbelievable performance on the land and in the water. Citizen Luke says, I am sure the materials uh, of its skin include the mane of some kelpie? Alright, that's what? Uh, look how that thing dashed on the land and underwater. That was incredible. It can't be just some normal blimp. Oh god, this one is a bit harder to read. That is so blurred uh, from the light. The test lasted only three hours before the blimp landed again. Sources say the inventor ended the test because of the rain, which is highly doubted by the journalist. 
considering its outstanding performance during the test. In the subsequent interview, the young inventor claims that he is not sponsored by any individuals or companies and that the invention itself is only a result of pursuing science, which means, emphasized by the inventor, it has nothing to do with interest or the uh, life... Oh, five hour blackout in the city on the same day. Okay, excuse me, what? Uh, okay, the next one on the left. A foolish, foolish genius, no plans of selling the blimp's design. Next, a uh, breadcrumb spaying dispenser. Citizen Luke says, yeah, me again. <laughs> what is that start? Yeah, me again, but I am not like those UFO love. Uh, oh, you mean the fried chicken? Yeah, yeah, it's crispy on the outside and juicy on the inside. Best fried chicken ever. Those stupid guards, damn it. Ugh, I should have bought more. <laughs> what the hell? When the journalist arrived at the scene, the inventor was helping the children with their dominoes. In the interview, he denies the participation in charity and claims that he has already sold the design of the frying machine to a fast food chain. Okay, I presume a tiny bit is up here at the top. Uh, excuse me, my mouse is not showing. Where is it? This part here at the top, but I can't read half of it, so we're gonna skip that. There was too high an offer to reject. That was too high of an offer to reject. The in inventor seems pleased when asked about the price of the frying machine. Shame it's going to rain soon, and I could have asked for a higher price if I could make some improvements, say to the breadcrumb spraying dispenser. Alright, that will be a new direction. The journalist believes the investor's random behavior is exactly the opposite of what he claims. It has nothing to do with interest. A reasonable guess is that the uh, flight test was actually a well-planned commercial promotion. Sure. Again, sorry about the squeaks. Need to move the mic around. Alright, didn't expect to read newspaper articles here. But anyway, we shall be returning back to our usual. And turning this back on. Had to silence, silence the main menu. All right, but we have a story to get to. Uh, but before we do so, oh yeah, before we do so, very quick two things. So again, this was pointed out to me, so I have no idea if this is gonna do something, but this appeared after chapter two was complete, so let's see. No? There are numerous injustices in the world. The law cannot prevail over power. All right. But there shall eventually be a sword sharp enough to cut it down. All right. Aw, I was hoping I could click on this, because that is... I think that is Schneider's dress or something, just neatly folded there. Huh. Weird. Alright, anyway, since that is not working. There is another thing that I accidentally skipped on on uh, Chapter 2 last time, which was on Stage 3, actually. As pointed out by another comment, uh, there were two things that can be opened with that key that I got, and one of them was on stage 3, and I missed it, so we're gonna do that very quickly before heading into the new thing. The door with wet paint. The paint on this door has yet to dry, the black paint is really out of place, and it is obvious that the original color was bright orange. You knock, but there was no response. A sign that read, not yet, was placed on the door. Is that a dead bird? Okay. An unpopular children's song. Oh, it is. Who killed the snowy dove? Do dove, sorry. I, said the cricket, with my heart and musket I killed the snowy dove. Who saw her die? I, said the owner of the suitcase, with... My vision and sight, I saw her die. Who dug her grave? I, said the cricket, with my pick and spade, I dug her grave. Who'll make her a shroud? 
I, said the owner of the suitcase, with my little suitcase, I'll make her shroud. Oh boy, okay, well, with that, uh, out of the way, Jesus Christ. So then, chapter 3. Novelia takes the Pureo. So then, like I said a bit earlier, this is obviously a reference to something else. In this case, it is a reference to the... A uh, collection of short stories by Samuel Beckett, uh, translated into English, the title that is. It says, Stories and Texts for Nothing. And it says, it gathers three of Beckett's short stories, The Expelled, The Calmative, and The End, all written in 1946, and the 13 short prose pieces he named Texts for Nothing in 1950-52. to All of these works are collected in the Grove Press, edition of Beckett's complete short prose. They were originally written in French and published in 1955 by Les Editions de Minuit as Nemely et Texte de Pourillon, with uh, a second edition illustrated and published by the same publisher in 1958. Oh boy, how much French is gonna be in this thing? Hopefully not much, because <laughs> I will not last long, but we'll see. Anyway, it is time to dive into chapter 3. Let's see about this thing, shall we? Oh, well, this will be fun. This is an interesting one. I see a chessboard. Hmm, okay. Huh. Sheldon Oracles? Is that how you pronounce that? Hmm. Kind of wondering. Hold on. Nope, never mind. It is Chaldean. And as I found out, says a member of an ancient people who lived in Chaldea. Circa 800 BC and ruled Babylonia from 625 to 539 before Christ. There were... They were renowned as astro astronomers and astrologers. Okay, that is very interesting. Anyway, hands up and answer the question. A delicate badge will be given to the best student. Uh-huh. What Arcanists regard to be more important is the knowledge from another pathway, which is often known as Gnosis. Compared with mankind's knowledge gained from reasoning, what are the features of Gnosis? Oh my freaking god, this word will never leave me alone. Not in... not in freaking... <laughs> oh my god. Not in freaking The Legend of Heroes games. Genshin likes to throw this shit around as well. Okay, yeah, this is a word that is forever gonna stay with me with any RPG I play, I guess. <clears throat> Sonetto. Hey, I was right. Miss, the features <sighs> of Gnosis are... 1. It cannot be verified by an independent third party. And 2. It is impossible to be comprehended through reasoning. Oh my god! <clears throat> Sorry. Exactly. And that's also one of the reasons that the knowledge of the study of Arcanum is hard to be accepted by the academic world. The academic research is required to be open to the public and can pass the independent tests. But the unpredictability of Arcanum will lead to the arcane researches to methodological agnosticism. <laughs> methodological agnosticism, huh? Thus, all the trainings and the scientific stabilizing appliances that the school provided for you is to overcome the instability of your arcane skill, in order to ensure the peace and stability of the human world. Hmm. May the peace be with us! Holy creepfest. Uh, this also reminds me right now, considering this chapter looks then to be very much based on a young Sonero and probably others as well from what I've deduced from the, that picture. Uh, considering Sonero is approaching her 80% uh, bond thing, 
I think maybe in one of these parts for this specific le uh, Let's Play section through Chapter 3, I might just do a read-through. Maybe at the finale. Ma maybe after the finale when I'm done. I'm gonna do a full read-through through the... I think it's three pages in her um, story section for the character. Anyway. Oh, that's... Uh, what's her name? était assez rapide pour répondre à cette question. Comment elle a... Comment elle a pu être si rapide Oh god, there's gonna be a lot of French in here. I was almost quick enough to answer that question. How could... How could she be so fast? Next question. After the fall of the Roman Empire, the number of arcanists, along with the related literature, had reduced correspondingly. Who can tell us the history of that time in brief? Huh. After the fall of the Roman Empire, the number of arcanists, along with the related literature, had reduced correspondingly. Okay. Miss! Miss! That's... I... I... Miss! I know this one! Oh god. Well, I'm terrified where this chapter is gonna go, considering this... this... this is just gonna feature them as children. I'm also gonna have a heart melt. Senato. Aw, come on, she answered first. Or had to raise her hand first. As the first. Roman Empire declined, some Arcanists were tempted by the irrational side of their nature and applied magia naturalis in warfare and disputes over interests, which irritated the church and other powers of religion. Huh. At that time, people in Europe widely considered Arcanum to be the paganism that collaborates with the demons, hence the trials against Arcanists. Pretty much witch trials, huh? In response, Arcanists struck back fiercely However, due to their spontaneous character and the unpredictability of their whereabouts, their communication was unsuccessful during the fight. Hmm. Both sides struggled in repeated battles. In the end, mankind, jointly led by both their religious and secular leaders, prevailed. Huh. <laughs> I'm gonna lie, I like this world building a, a lot right now. Going into the past, talking about the past rather, and just building up this... Familiar, yet different world history. <laughs> Why are you confused? That's not how your grandpa told you, huh? Miss, she's wrong! I know, I know the right answer! Uh-huh. Alright, give it a try, Matilda. Matilda, that was the name. For what I know, it wasn't Arcanus who started the war. The attack on Constantinople was waged by lordships in Western Europe to ransack the capital for resources and the literature of Arcanum. The nursery rhyme my grandpa sang for me tells me all about it. <laughs> what was that facial expression, all right? And long ago, Arcanists weren't called by this name. Mm -hmm. They were once gifted philosophers, diviners or doctors, until they were put on the labels of pagans, freaks and witches, and isolated by their people. Yeah? They were entirely forgotten. The next time people saw them, they had this new name. Arcanists. Uh-huh. Inspiring. Do you remember its name? Uh... Grandpa never told me that. Hmm... How about the melody? Could you present several lines for the class? Melody? Let me think. It was like... Uh, 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 that's not it. Oh, that's weird. I... I, I can't remember it. Huh. Oh. Don't remember a thing, but still feel confident enough to answer the question. Shame on you, little thing. <laughs> wow. Uh, also, are they literally using the silhouette for uh, Regulus? <laughs> or this thing? <laughs> what the hell? I was even humming the horn last night. It's just a... <laughs> oh? Sit down, please, Matilda. Senato is correct. Matilda, you have just transferred here. It may take you some time to get used to our curriculum. A rhyme can be used in studying folklore, but it's still different from a formal historical intelligence. 
Sunny Kuja. <laughs> mumbles. Class, please turn to the last question of the test. After the Ottoman Empire seized control over Constantinople, Georgius Gemistos, a member of our Sharon commune, also an arcanist and philosopher of the Roman Empire, traveled to Florence. Uh huh. He brought one classical literature of ancient thurgy into the city, which sparked discussion and later brought about the annual humanist gathering, the Chaldea Conference, where the study of Arcanum was debated over its use for mankind development. Uh huh. All right. Who knows the name of his work brought by Gemistos? Miss me. me. <laughs> She's a very eager one. Hmm. Her eyes fall on the desk, uh, desk next to Sonetta. There is a short wall made of books on the desk uh, desktop. Verton, do you know the answer to this question? Oh, <laughs> is she hiding behind books? Verton. Uh huh. Is she sleeping? She's sleeping, isn't she? <laughs> The instructor walks down from the podium. Verton. She is absent again. Oh, she isn't even there. Uh-oh. Miss, I know the answer. <laughs> she doesn't give a shit. It is Caladia Oracles. All right, thank you, Matilda. <laughs> oh, God, Verton. Child Verton, this will be interesting. Oh. Two things immediately, huh? Alright, what's the first thing? Open sandwich? No, you are not awake yet. You are still drowned in this mire of meditation. Sticky, swampy, and dark. As black as despair? <clears throat> anyway, that's a reference. Where am I? Is this my memory? Is this my memory? Memory. Good try. The logic you pride yourself on continues to serve you properly. It allows you to make some good deductions here, like a biologist analyzing the cause of a humpback appearing in a swamp. <laughs> uh-huh. But the answer will disappoint you, unfortunately. This is just a dream, an illusion they shoveled into your head. These people are very familiar with using coercive power. They are? A group of people in gowns. Their gowns are made of white polyester and are over knee length. There are seven, namely number one to number seven. Uh-huh. Probably only those odd number guys are here. Or maybe number four. Or six is also with them. Damn it, I don't care. <laughs> what matters is that your classmate is among them. No, not the gentle and loyal one who always stands by your side. Okay, so not Sonetto. Who, Matilda? It is the other one. The one with indifferent outlines that makes her look like a refined machine. Huh? Burton? Let's skip her first name and only pay attention to her glorious family name. Like what most people did. Like sherry cask whiskeys to the alcoholic. Upman cedar-aged Robusto Cameroons to smokers. And the Mesmers to the Arcanus. <laughs> See, bourgeois. <laughs> what? Uh... What do they do? Anything mystical. When they sit there and point at you with an iron stick, you'll pass out. When they put an iron ring around your neck, you'll feel burnt. Mm hmm. You must be familiar with all these freaky tricks because you are surrounded by freaky tricksters. Like that little girl who protects others with her glass-dipping pen, or that floating apple dancing in the air. Uh-huh. The Mesmers know how to suffocate the flames of consciousness. They help you free-fall internally to the bottom of the abyss, 
as you are now. It's really hard finding an arcanist who can freely master such skill. As you know, scarcity causes tragedy. That was the start of her nightmare. When the child labor law was turned into a piece of wrinkled paper to wrap the sandwich. D the young daughter of the Mesmer family was led to a room when she was 12. Before she stepped in, she had sensed the messy magnetic field on the other side of the door, thanks to her acute perception. All right. Compared to humans, arcanists are much more emotionally vulnerable. It won't take much to overwhelm them and force them to regress to animals. Oh, really? The Mesmers are merciful and professional. They will never turn away any patient who comes to them for treatment. By then, you should realize the wrapping paper was never protecting the sandwich. But the hand. Huh. <laughs> the mustard from an unknown bottle. The squeezed meatloaf and rusty lettuce leaf. All were crushed and fell out from between the bread. Just like the chaotic noises and the raspy screaming that fill her ears. This filth contaminated the little girl's hands and corrupted the white polyester. Huh. Huh. Ellipses. Hmm. It is indeed a good time for silence. Now you've noticed those exposed wounds on the machine. Those marks from repeated washing and adjustments. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, the traumata from childhood is usually hard to forget. Those memories are engraved in our heart and run through our veins. Eventually, they contaminate every single neuron with mucus snot. Since then, every inch of growth is an extension of pain. New bones will be eroded, and the condition can't be cured by cellular renewal. Both you and her are familiar with this. Uh huh. Okay, take your suitcase. Now it's time. Get lost. Every time this guy speaks, I have this dumb feeling he's speaking to Burton, but at the same time he is also breaking the fourth wall and speaking to us, the player. So apologies if I'm not talking when he's talking. I'm just absorbing what he, whatever he's saying because he's trying to be like very on the nose with stuff okay all right buddy as always cryptic as you can be what do we have here a dream it's black and sharp it's hopping around touch it oh we're doing that huh Okay, let's go with the usual. Greetings. Well, you are sparkly, <laughs> squeaking. It's mad. <laughs> What's your wish, timekeeper? It would be great if I met you and your rubble first. Mr. Carson, where are you? Does the critter talk that much? Usually, no. Okay. Was this supposed to teach me something? I don't know. Uh, anyway. Is it just me or is the music off key? Have I startled you? Hold on. Did it just feel like it's off key? Maybe I misheard. Maybe I misheard. Okay. Thou shalt make an atonement for thy sins in full. Using troops. <laughs> hmm. Thorny and pure blooded. Okay. 
Well, next. Whoa. Well, this shifted. Hold on. Damn, that way went to the left. Oh, this is still visible. Okay, these two are outside. What do we have here? Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna presume that it's Burton sleeping. <laughs> At least that looks like it's the the little the little thing they are using to represent her. Okay, frog and toffee. Pebbles, frogs, the attic. The attic with stinky socks, they're just a teeny tiny part of the whole world. Mm. No battle stages yet. The last class is over. Also, is that Burden? Students leave the classroom with their friends in groups. Goodbye, miss. Mm. Mm. It is! Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. I will just take another route. Sonato, come here. Mm. Is my, oh my god. still there? She didn't push it down, right? She didn't. <sighs> She is nice, unlike the bad potion instructor who turned my books into a puddle of mud. Uh -oh. oh, right. Guess what I found today. Here, give me your hand. <gasps> the foreteller of the rain, the Hylorborea. It's an adorable little froggy. I caught it through the school's front gate. I even got stung by the electric fence when I took my hands back. Your school is surrounded by an electric fence? Holy shit. It keeps croaking in my pocket. Look, it's still raining outside. Aren't you aware that you've been given a timeout, Miss Burton? <laughs> huh? <laughs> She's a bit of a troublemaker, isn't she? I don't understand why you always skip classes. You know that we are not supposed to pay too much attention to affairs outside the school. Please, don't bring me these pebbles and frogs anymore. These are... meaningless. Hmm. We are born to die martyrs. Whoa. Why? Just because the student handbook says so. That's right. Hmm. Okay. I don't like the handbook. It smells like those stinky socks in the attic. <laughs> okay. I have a feeling how this chapter is gonna go, what this past is about. Alright. Sonato, aren't you really curious about what is outside the school? Mm-hmm. You were also in that parade outside the school before. The pebbles, the frogs, the attic with stinky socks. <laughs> They're just a teeny tiny part of the whole world. I once met a girl who came to our school. Please, please stop. <laughs> These are very dangerous things. Aww. The student handbook is protecting us. It is protecting us from harm and regrets. Okay. So this this whole chapter I feel like is going to be about them pretty much learning about the outside world more and not shying away from it. At least it's going to be about Sonetto waking up from whatever this is. As the instructors have told us, to live is to lose things around us until the day we lose life itself to death. That's why we should only focus on the supreme mission. Jesus. Until the day we lose life itself. <laughs> that is one hell of a freaking thing to teach children. To death. <laughs> oh? Now it's coming, my lord. What? Oh. Don't forget my heart. Yet. Oh, my God. Oh. oh. This is a memory. Failed. Hmm? Her dramatic segment has been reactivated. Increase the power, stabilize her psych cube. Oh, okay, I see. 
she is reliving her past memories, huh? Is that it? Try the next dream. Uh huh. The artificial somnambulism therapy may not work on her, Mesmer. Hmm? You're here, Madam Z. All patients who have the symptoms of stress disorder need to receive treatments in the rehabilitation center. Her trauma level was assessed as a type 2. I needed to take responsibility for her health. Back in the year when she became the timekeeper, she didn't receive any treatment. I know her well. She has enough power in her to make it through. I'm just following orders, madam. It is the committee's direct order to treat Fairton. If you have anything to say, convince the vice president first. Okay, never mind. Scratch the whole thing. I, I still think the whole dream is gonna be about her past. And we're gonna see Sonedo grow into the person she is right now. But okay, she's kind of trapped in her own memory, huh? Right now, through this treatment? <sighs> she hasn't had any food for days. Gave her a glucose injection. I have a meeting later. So if you would excuse me. Madam Z takes her thermos cup and leaves the room. The ward becomes silent again. There are barely any other sounds except the slight electrical buzzing. I did expect you would have learned your lesson in such a long time. Timekeeper. No. I'm more used to calling you Fairton. I have changed. Have you? Are you still suffering from those pointless things? Pointless things? She shakes her head, her eyes shift onto the screen. The side tube amplitude is leaping in a repeated fixed pattern. Burden doesn't give her response. Mm. Whoa. Oh. Oh, I've seen this mentioned. Resonate, huh? The flames of injustice are yet to burn at the stake on rainy days. Yes. Oh, welcome. Ah. You have come in a hurry. Okay. So there must be an emergency. Oh, it's tutorials. Don't worry about it. About that, Zemel. Uh, load broken ideas for improvement in power. Ah, uh huh. Tetris? I'm playing Tetris with this? Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, I see. Tap here to view the loaded ideas. Tap again to perceive it from a different angle. Ah! Ah. Put the blanks in the brain to make it complete. Well, this is an interesting thing. How it works at least. Every idea has unique stats. Load an idea in the brain to gain its stats. Tap to tap on delete to clear all ideas. Tap to rotate, drag it out to cancel. Use the switch to uh, to switch resonance plan. Ah, so I can have like builds essentially, different four different builds. Hmm. All right. Interesting. And this is the level up. Your stats will be thoroughly improved as you level up your resonance. The more you ponder, the more you gain. Uh, resonates to level up ideas. Number one, expand the capacity of the brain. Number two, level up the ideas. Number three, obtain new ideas. Okay. Let's do a level up then, to level 2. And that gives me new pieces. Okay, I see. Oh, quite a lot of new pieces. Okay, for now I'm just gonna hit this. Yes. That's fine. I'm gonna bother with that later. 
Attack critical rate, critical damage, damage taken reduction. Mm -hmm. This one is just mostly raw stats. Crit rate, damage bonus, damage taken reduction. HP, damage taken reduction again. Damage bonus. Critical rate, critical resist rate, damage bonus. HP and damage bonus. Okay. Okay, not gonna bother with this too much right now, but cool. Gonna worry about it later. What the hell am I looking at now? Artificial Samnem... Samnembulism? Uh, devices are now available for use. What the hell is this now? It's time for the Foundation's Arcane Ability Test. Please hold on, I need to confirm the test items again. Use of Arcane Skill, Reaction Speed and Emergency Response. Alright. Items confirmed. Artificial Samnembulism device set. I will take you to the test area as soon as possible. Huh? Uh-huh. Please? Why am I out of order? Interesting music for this. Uh, please read the instruction carefully and pay extra attention on the highlighted sections. Okay. Samnabulism allows one to reflect and test oneself, which means it's a great challenge to the most of all. Take the challenge to get clear drops and resonance materials. Uh, Samnabulism uh, consists of multiple dreams, each of which tells a different story. Uh-huh. Read the stories and clear the challenges to get stars. Ah, uh, okay, I think I'm starting to understand what this is. This is... What would be the best analogy? Like... I guess like, um... Kind of like Genshin's Abyss kind of thing? And I can't remember what the Star uh, Honkai Star Rail's equivalent to that is. Keep forgetting that name as well. Wuthering Waves have something similar as well, like those two. Uh, number three, you will get rewards according to the total number of stars you have collected. Okay, yeah. You will get rewards according to the total number of stars you have collected. The more the... Uh, the more... The more the challenge is clear, the better the rewards. There are new rewards to win every week, and the reward progress will not be reset. Actually, this sounds more like, uh, considering it's a weekly reset, this sounds more now like, uh, like uh, Star Rail's uh, simulated universe. That also resets every week. Surface Training Report, Report Overview, Dream Level or ORD-1 Fragment 01. Test star 0 out of 100. Dream tasks already refreshed this week. Total rewards, okay. Alright. Let's just see what in the. Oh, this is this shop. Okay. Okay, I see. I see. Interesting. Uh, okay. For the purposes of this video, I'm not gonna bother with it right now, but you guys can leave me comments and tell me. Pretty much tell me if there is any kind of hard story to this, or if it's just uh, random stuff in this thing. I will be doing this weekly, I guess, to get the to get the rewards out as much as possible. Or at least as much as I can do out of this. Uh, but for now, we're gonna go back to... Back to the story. And back to grabbing rewards from this thing. Yum. All right, let's see, what do we have here? Uh, number one timetable on the star. A record of a day in Laplace Rehabilitation Center. Hmm. Try to understand. Uh, different times, okay. Timetable of Laplace Rehabilitation Center staff. From 7.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. patrolled the lobby and the surrounding areas. From 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. reported for duty at the reception and received one visitor. Reciting the whole employee number. Can anyone actually do that? <laughs> 9.30 to 9.35, so only 5 minutes. Done with breakfast. P.S. The nut scone today was a bit hard. From 9.35 to 12.30 p.m. 
Reception time. Smile, Sandy, smile. <laughs> okay, so this is from the perspective of someone called Sandy, huh? 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. Lunchtime. Roast spinach with potato and roast pork chop. That is making me hungry. 1.30 p.m. to 2 p.m. Reception time. Never had a pork chop this small. <laughs> 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Reception time. Where on earth is the 12th issue of Weird Tales? Who would steal a stupid pulp magazine? Damn it. Somebody tell me the ending. <laughs> 3 p.m. to 3.05 p.m. Reception time. <sighs> smile, Sandy, smile. <laughs> 3.05 p.m. to 4.05 p.m. Reception time. There seems to be uproar in other areas. Uh, I think I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> 4.05 p.m. to 4.10 p.m. Reception time. Okay. Hmm? That was just five minutes? Seriously? 4.10 4, uh, 4 10 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Reception time. Amanda should have reported for duty much earlier. She was late for unbelievably 45 minutes last time. 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Reception time. Great, she's late. Late. For how much longer do I have to sit in this dump today? 6.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Take a deep breath, Sandy, and smile. Only 30 minutes to go. 7.30 p.m. to 13.30 Three one twelve. Whoa, 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 whoa. Healthy way to drink every hour. What the hell happened here? Eight p.m. to nine p.m. Help deal with the fucking emergency. Somebody please lock those lunatics. They are running towards the corridor. Oh, some shit happened. Request for leave, Sandy. Time to... No, three days. <laughs> Reason, mental trauma. <laughs> what the hell? Alright. Another dream. A touch of fresh green. The round eye is blinking alone. You can hear the sounds it, it makes everywhere. Uh-huh. Oh, it's the winged cat, but like a dream version. Great things. Uh, more cryptic shit. Uh, ally, the chant of incantations echoes here after a character casts a three-star incantation HP. Uh, minus max HP for all enemies. Okay. Croaking sounds. A frog this large. Okay, more hallucinations for her, huh? Also, I love that her little, like, she doesn't have an animal little thing when she's in the suitcase, but it's a, it's a piston. Okay, the music is a bit distorted in the background. It goes a bit crazy. Also connecting? What? What is happening? Alright, the whatever was happening went away. Probably my connection just freaking out for a moment. Anyway, let's see about this. A sword shop. Using troops. <laughs> the green is yours from now on. Huh. Oh. Frog doll. A toy used to awaken the blurred memory about a puppy. It can be turned in as a task item in story trails. Uh, the funny crown and the ceramic touch make it different from the moist and living image in the memory. It's a very cute little froggy. Hyla Arborea. The petite ones that are good at jumping often hang around lakes or groves. They can always make it to under the leaves before the rain drops. That is how the students who paid attention at class look at where they are and catch them with their own hands. Also, is that the Latin for frog? Hold on. It is the Latin for frog or more specifically, it is the Latin for European tree frog. The very same frog that we've seen uh, 
use as imagery here. Okay. Interesting. Stalky? Stalky. It is immoral to stalk others, and we all know that. Of course we do. Hello, this is Zanetto, the chief assistant of the Foundation's timekeeper. My employee number is SF3800000080110 y Could you please register a visit to Ward 1525 for me? No! <clears throat> Sorry. Please present your ID. Hold that crystal with your right hand until the color changes. Ooh. Hold that crystal with your right hand until the color changes, okay? What do we have here? Loss of this card must be casted. Must be casted ego. Uh, extirpate to it at once. Okay. Identity cards and Pavlov. For passing and issuing orders only. Identification number. Position title timekeeper. Affiliated chief assistant. Uh, signature, property of St. Paulov, issuing authority, St. Paulov Foundation, Sonetto. Is that her birth year? 1st October? <laughs> what is this year? Year 8? <laughs> what? Anyway. Oh, okay. What is the shape of the sun? A sphere or a cube? Ooh. I like this effect of it being scanned while they're talking. What is the shape of the sun? A sphere or a cube? A sphere. Uh huh. Which is edible? Rubber, cabbage, or carbuncle? <laughs> carbuncle? <laughs> I'm sorry. Every time I'm gonna hear the word uh, or the name carbuncle, I'm not gonna be thinking about the enemies in this game, I'm gonna be thinking about the little cutesy little carbuncles from Final Fantasy XIV. Anyway. Cabbage. Does the rain come down from the sky or the other way around? Can be both. <laughs> You're good to go. Can <laughs> be both? I love that that is an answer in this world. World can be both. Take these materials with you. The visitor guide is between the second and third page. Go in from the left, turn right twice and take the lift. Keep walking and you will see the ward. <laughs> also, I want to point out, I've seen this image already on the, uh, like, login loading screen, uh, but, at the same time, the 1950s, 1960s, like, sci-fi aesthetic, mwah, love it. I see. Thank you. Is there anything else I should know? Just leave the number out next time. <laughs> <laughs> Will you? Huh? <laughs> no. Leave her alone. The receptionist disappears once again behind the counter. Leave the nerd alone. Let her recite her number. She likes it. The nurses seem busy here. Rehabilitation center guidance. <laughs> the registration is also more rigorous than it was before. I wonder if this is because of the storm. Maybe. Turn right again. Hmm? But there's only one way, and it goes left. Did I miss any crossings? So Nana looks back over her shoulder. A shadow swiftly disappears around the corner. <sighs> hmm? What's that? She goes to the corner. <laughs> what is that eerie? There's only a machine with a shaking console. Hmm... Maybe I'm seeing things. Uh-huh. The buildings of Laplace Scientific Computing Center have been cleverly designed. A crossing is hidden in this corner. Mm hmm? So, here is a junction to the right. Sonata walks to the junction and disappears into the light. Behind her... One of the doors in the hallway opens. Oh, that went away. It's still auto-scrolling. 
It follows Sonetto. Speeding up. It speeds up. Slowing down. It slows down as well. Well then, let's go faster and faster. Until the shoes are about to be lifted. And now run, okay? Couldn't read that. Ooh. Press every button here to buy some time. Who was that? Could be a disoriented patient, or a man a spy, or... I can't get away from them. Ooh. And I will not bring danger to the timekeeper. I will catch this person. Mm hmm Interesting backgrounds, I love it. Okay. What did I miss? Because it was scrolling too fast and I am trying to read properly. Uh, Sarada walks to the junction and disappears into the light. Behind her, one of the doors in the hallway opens. A shadow follows her into the light. Footsteps, sometimes near, sometimes far. Follow Sonetto, speeding up, okay. Until the shoes are about to be lifted out from the ground and even the ankles are starting to hurt. Go quickly and more quickly, quickly, okay. Anyway, continuing. The elevator stops at the 15th floor. It's rather empty and spacious here. One can only hear Sonetta's footsteps, aside from the ever-going automatic broadcasts in the building. The Rehabilitation Center is established to provide effective medical services and trainings to the patients for their bodily functions to be restored. This center is managed by Laplace Scientific Computing Center. If you have any special requirements or have encountered any suspicious persons, please move to the ground floor lobby for help. That was an interesting way to say Laplace. Laplace? If you are distant from the lobby, please press the yellow button next to the fire hose cabinets. The security on your floor will come to assist shortly. The footsteps appear again. They're here. I don't see any cabinets. That's fine. If no help or assistance has come to you in time, you may take action to defend yourself. A free wake-up procedure will be administered on any unresponsive persons, if any. Good. Just what I need. The sanitary trolley is parked at the next turn. I've left the biggest garbage bag on it. <laughs> she suddenly speeds up and quickly turns into the corner. Oh? The unknown follower becomes anxious and runs to the corner. <gasps> oh! What the hell am I looking at? <gasps> hmm? Who are you? Speak up! Why are you following me? Oh, is Matilda? The follower refuses to respond. It clutches the bag to cover its face and tries desperately to escape. Stop! You're not getting away. No. The bag is struggling with all efforts. This is a battle of dignity. Soleto feels it is slipping away from her grasp, so she pulls out her wand. Whoever you are. May the peace be with us! Holy shit. She's ready to murder. Oh, excuse me, music. What? Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> A weird garbage bag. What is this? Am I playing Star Rail now? A heat-resistant tinfoil garbage bag used by the re Rehabilitation Center. A garbage bag with self-awareness is not that rare. What's more intriguing is how it ties itself. Uh-huh. This trial is mine to judge. The enemy has extremely high mental defense, yet relatively low reality defense. Any ally who deals uh, reality damage is recommended in this battle. Okay. Well, this thing should be dead. So let's do this. Agreed. Buff you up. An eye for an eye. Murder, death, kill. Oh. Very well. Potentially. Pay for thy sins with thy blood. Wow. Oh yeah, dead. Hey, it is. Pray for you. <laughs> she just pops out. Sorry. Yeah, this is this is a place where the sorry is appropriate. <laughs> 
kick the shit out of Matilda. Uh, nothing hidden, huh? Oh yeah, you can see her. All right. And the other one is here as well now. All right, story only. New blood. The new blood will rush into the gigantic body, making every effort to serve it. What? What? Oh? Huh? Excuse me? Need more... Need more details of that. Matilda? It's you? <laughs> Dead blush, what the... I'm sorry, I... I thought it was someone suspicious, so... Oh, <laughs> What was that sound? <laughs> Wait, what was that sound? <laughs> yes. Anyway. <clears throat> Pay that voice actor more. Uh, Matilda buries her face in her palms and shrugs her shoulders. Matilda, are you alright? She's fine, she's just embarrassed. <laughs> Matilda gives Sonetto a push and steps back. Her face blushes. <laughs> Attack the monitor student in primary defense and disturb the peace in public. You! You were the one in a garbage bag! As your classmate used to be, I'm obliged to stop you from making a scene here and disturbing the patients. Uh huh, said the person that was in the garbage bag. I'm. I'm here to give you my warning. Uh huh. She suddenly runs towards. <laughs> The other end of the hallway before Sonero can possibly react to it and do something. Please wait. Bump. Ouch. Oh. Hey. Isn't it the sonneteer and our outstanding graduate? Is that what you call her, the sonneteer? I thought it was some acute mania patient getting out, waiting for my fancy transcranial magnetic stimulation therapy. You're what now? Your fancy transcranial magnetic stimulation therapy? Ah, uh, ça fait mal. <laughs> Quoi? Sonneteer? How would I have anything to do with her? <laughs> I'm Matilda Boanish, the top three students in school, the monitor assistant, and the speaker of graceful French. <laughs> None shall forget my name after making the acquaintance of me. Yes, I will agree with one fact. The fact that you are unforgettable. I didn't. But I guess no one will remember the third place. <laughs> <laughs> Go away! Go! Don't stand in my way! Matilda, please take... Matilda runs away without looking back. Sonetta stands there with a handkerchief in her hand. She's about to give it to Matilda. <sighs> she just ran away like that. There's even garbage dust on her hair. <laughs> I didn't know she was the one following me. I shouldn't have acted in haste. All right, get down to business. Sonetto, you are here visiting the timekeeper, right? Follow me. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> A little bird told me you went to visit Burton. Is that right? Oh, hi. Yes. How is she doing? Oh, hi. Just like the other patients. Unconscious. Artificial somnambulism therapy shall be good for her. Uh -huh. It's been four years since she became the timekeeper. She surely needs a break. Hmm. Yes, and I have no other opinion about this, Madam Vice President. Huh, so Burton has been doing that for four years already, huh? I'm here for another issue. Madam Z places a stack of files on the desk. The proposal of additional manpower submitted by the House of Integratus. I have given it consideration. It's not worth a committee hearing. Are you here to talk about dead plans? Yes, because I have the exact opposite view. Uh-huh. Burton's suitcase will not be affected by the storm, just like the buildings in our headquarters. 
Huh. Interesting. So the buildings in the headquarters are unaffected by the storm. So you guys are, what, just gonna remain even when time goes backwards? How is that gonna look? Which means she will soon be able to form a team. Indirectly controlled by the Foundation. Mm -hmm. I suggest putting her in command of an independent autonomous unit. With enough support, they should soon become another reliable force of the Foundation. Hmm, okay. And it also facilitates our relationship with Burton. The people Burton brought back with her. Who are they? Damn, this lady has style. Also... <laughs> long neck? Excuse me? A lot of people have a, a lot of long necks in this game, I've noticed. Arcanists who have stable personalities, good command over their arcane skills, and some social experiences. <laughs> if you ask me, they are some pitiful exiles who lost everything in the storm. So desperate. Horrified and overwhelmed, longing for something stable to hold on to. I uh, am smelling some dissing towards uh, a certain certain best girl Regulus there. Don't you dare. Burton is not here. Only the Foundation can give them what they want. But what can they give us in return? The innate arbitrariness of Arcanists are questioning our beliefs of mankind's supremacy because they have nobler blood. The innate arbitrariness of Arcanists are questioning our beliefs of mankind's supremacy because they have nobler blood. Uh-huh, okay. <sighs> of course the Foundation needs new blood, especially those who are highly obedient and know the importance of order. Of course, that's what you're looking for. That's why these poor refugees need no independent unit or autonomy. They need the guidance of disciplines. A teaching more comprehensive than what's been given to those naive children in school. Oh boy. I see. What you want is a group of dumb puppets. <laughs> I like her! I'm always the optimist in the room. And you know that, Miss Z. This won't be so much of a dead plan if one day they can prove they are not some dumb puppets. Uh-huh, sure. Z is just telling it as it is. Alright. No secrets here. Moving on. A deep sleep. Bodies breaking down into pieces in tetra tetrahedrons and cubes. Your head is a pretty octahedron. <laughs> oh, we're going into sleep mode, aren't we? Also, I forgot to check. Hold on. Was anything going on over here in the meantime? Oh, there was. There kind of was. Hold on. So, from here... Here. Okay, nothing visual there. On number four, as these three meet up. There is a scene playing out here. In class. Alright. What is this? Huh. And now... Nothing again here, huh? Okay. Okay, Matilda is on below. With some random patient, I guess. And these two are with Burton. Alright, let's hop on in. A deep sleep. <gasps> you calm, Madna. You can. <laughs> you put yourself into that position, my girl. Mais je n'ai suivi personne. Je me promenais simplement dans le couloir comme d'habitude. C'est elle qui était mal intentionnée. You were taking a walk in the hallway as usual, and you do that inside of a garbage bag as usual. Are you a Star Rail protagonist? 
qui m'a sauté dessus. <rire> ah hein Oh. Je devais avoir l'air misérable quand je m'en suis sortie. <rire> je voulais juste lui dire que je lui ai lu dans la dernière divination. Les amis qu'ils ont amenés sont peut-être en danger. Holy shit, the French is strong in this one. Just want to tell her what I read from the latest divination. The friends they brought may be in danger. Oh. Mais je ne sais pas quand Verta sera de nouveau consciente. C'était plus ou moins une personne remarquable. Shoot. She... Verdon was more or less a remarkable person. Sans compter que c'est la responsable de ce netto maintenant. Mais je ne sais pas si je dois être en colère ou triste pour ça. <laughs> Son netto doit être terriblement inquiet pour elle. Si seulement je pouvais aider. I like this. I like this dynamic between these three. Sonetto is ver worried about Verdon. And Matilda is worried about Solano. It's literally a chain going going upwards. Et ça fait longtemps qu'on s'est pas vu. Ses cheveux ont poussé et sentent bon. <laughs> Her hair has grown and smells nice. Matilda, please. Ah! Qu'est-ce que je viens de dire? Yes, what did you say? <laughs> Oncle là, tais-toi! Tu es Matilda, la personne qui va battre les meilleurs de la classe! <clears throat> she stops talking to herself and hears the sound of metals clattering near her. Then a wind. A nice cold wind. Skull. A very voice emerges behind her back. It is a man in a patient's gown. Huh? Who are you? Yeah. Your skull is falling. I was picking it up for you. Your skull? What are you timber chambering about? Are you a patient here? Where's your assigned care worker? I saw it. I saw it all. Bodies breaking down into pieces. Tetrahedrons and cubes. Your head. Oh. It's a pretty octahedron. Oh, that's from the uh huh description of the thing. I can't let your octahedron fall to the ground too. Be careful with your ears. Matilda steps back and moves away from the patient. She notices an iron collar on his neck, a common auxiliary apparatus in the rehabilitation center. There is a bunch of keys in his hand, with some red stains on the sharp ends. Luckily, the emergency button is bright yellow. In bright yellow, is located a few meters away behind him. Matilda takes a deep breath. Thanks for reminding me. I will take good care of myself. See? This is my orb. Come up. Touch it. What's its shape? <laughs> this is... Yeah? <laughs> mm. His fingers turn gray and pale. A sign of frostbite. <laughs> what the hell? He tightens his fingers around the keys, like holding many sharpened knives in his hand, and charges at her wildly. Hmm. I see you didn't learn your lesson then! You have wounded a caretaker and took the keys! I'm obliged to take you down! May the peace be with us! Huh. What's going on with you, buddy? May the peace be with us. Whoa! Oh, well, there he is. What are these? Hold on. Let's see. Anything? Hmm. The extra descriptions here. All right. Well then, let's go with this. I believe in. Trust me. It's all right. And now to return to my long-term mission. Rest. All right. The storm took our friend from us. <laughs> In fact, we all knew this would have happened, but it took place too soon, caught us all off guard. And there were only clothes left. Ah. That's why that, that uh, P 
piece of clothing is in uh, in the menu now. Okay. That's right. I've looked up the directory of Arcanus in the U.S. in 1929. None of their family is on it. Hmm. She was Greco's biological daughter. Schneider was a pseudonym. I haven't worked out the reason behind this, but she was indeed. So now looks confused and painful. A human who casts arcane skills. That is interesting. Mm. Thanks for sharing. It could help with my disease analysis. Mesmer Jr. adds something to her report. She spins around on her s uh, swivel. Timekeeper has been diagnosed with type 2 trauma. Do you know what that means? I don't know much about psychology. It means she had suffered the same traumatic experience repeatedly. Repeatedly? Even so, she showed no behavioral or cognitive impairment. Back then, as we held her down and put the helmet on her, she even advised me in an extremely calm manner. I agree with your judgment, but it's just for this time. She was the bellwether of the breakaway incident after all. I'll say she's been well behaved this time. Hmm. I, I thought Timekeeper is receiving treatment for her low spirit, but you said you held her down. Oh, that's just another description of the method used for the same purpose. The aim was to ensure Verton was unconscious and taken back. That's the direct order from the Vice President of the Committee, Constantine. Huh. The order from on high was given on the premise of rational thinking and consideration over pros and cons. You are not questioning the reasoning of mankind, are you? I am not. Huh. <laughs> Sharing the same set of values is the reason I'd like to share these interesting details with you. The incident right now is giving me some, uh, Yorha vibes. Of course. If you were a pureblood human, I would appreciate you more. Huh. She turns her swivel to the artificial somnambulism device. Fairton's magnetic field always maintains a nuanced balance. She barely dreams proactively. So I have to deploy different dreams to search for the very first dream which reflects the source of her trauma. How much longer is this therapy going to take, in your view? However long it takes. As long as I receive a new order. Huh, okay, so that's what they're trying to do with the dream stuff. Sonetto stands up furiously. So none of these have been applied for the timekeeper's well-being. I, lo I love when she gets pissed, the Italian immediately comes out. Immediately the hand gestures. <laughs> yes. What's wrong with you, Sonetto? I... I don't... Sorry, Oops. I overreacted. I don't feel quite myself today. Pardon? Okay, I don't know. That was all. I can't tell what's wrong. Perhaps I ate something bad for breakfast. No. Go back and rest if you're feeling unwell. Don't be too hard on yourself. Thank you. Please, take good care of the timekeeper. I'll be on my way. Hmm. Mesmer watches her walk out of the room. There is confusion on her face. She adjusts her cufflinks subconsciously. Oh. The screen suddenly lights up. Particle groups start to flow on the screen. It is a dream initiated by the owner of the body. Huh? I am... Presuming that is not something that should happen in normal circumstances. All right, we have new shit. Let's see. For the sleeper, wondering, being unaware of where this is, he has seen everything, but is still in the dream. Wake him up. Okay, so that is. I presume dealing with... Yep. Oh, here I can see them. Mental Disordered. A patient whose mental status is not stable. The threat of a key can be even bigger than that of a knife. It is proven by Ivan, who suffers from a delusional disorder. 
Patient. A patient murmurs to himself. The change of the world has taken him to, ins uh, to insane. The process is unbearably long, painful, and irreversible. Tramp. Uh, an unkempt tramp who is still afraid to admit uh, to his mistakes. He still has an obsession with his past and has never considered putting his faded fire, uh, fire axe away. All right. Uh, to all, let a uh, let a surge of moxie prepare you for combat. Oh, we're starting with full moxie. Get rid of the fading you. Close the window. Scrag the throat that sings. I have to take the duty of your of your nurse. Uh huh. All right. Well. I hope you like a splash of red. To think of the world I have never awesome. seen before. Going with all the big moves. It will all be over soon. Each moment, now night. Nice. Thou shalt make an atonement for thy sins in full. Oh, almost. <laughs> there we go. Using troops. <laughs> Trapped in a natural dream or an artificial one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. There's something else somewhere. What are you hiding down here? What do you need? Submit a tiny acorn. The nursery rhyme that doesn't rhyme. You need a small acorn to learn everything about the tree with a name. The tree with a name. Okay. Oh, we're going back to... The memories. Uh, anything else? Ooh, hi. Hello. What is happening here? Nothing over there, nothing there. This is gonna be one of those times when I'm gonna be continuously scrolling over the map just looking for little secrets if there are any. Uh, alright. Very interesting. What is happening there? Black Sheep Wall. So she mustered the courage and jumped high into the air. That was when the seed was planted in her heart. In 388 BC, standing in the garden paths of Athens, there was an academia of philosophers. Holy volume. 36 human ideologists presented that day were thinking about the ever-present old question, just as you are. Uh-huh. Principle, huh? What passes knowledge? What maintains the world's balance? Students, don't forget the exhortation from the philosophers. Heritage, honor, rationality, responsibility. The principal nods. He holds out his hands like a conductor. This will be your lifelong pursuit. May, May the peace be with us. May the peace Also, the music in the background. He's pleased with the responses. Last year, 45% of our graduates were chosen to work in the St. Pavlov Foundation headquarters. A particular excellent student has even been accepted by the House of Integratus. The rest of the children, too, have become frontline investigators. Staffs a foundation office in other countries, or professional soldiers dedicating themselves to the magnificent cause of mankind. This is some. Um, this is some um, indoctrination shit. For thousands of years, we have taken in countless young arcanists from workhouses and foundling hospitals, 
and have raised them to be outstanding students and morals in every industry. And even if it isn't, it still very much feels like it. Soon, you will also be the backbone in preserving world order. And... Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Bert then. There is one student standing out in the... N in the neat line of students. She's in the wrong line, or say she's never in any lines. Sandwiched in between two neat lines, she looks like a pipe organ. She looks like a pipe organ stop that has fallen out of place. Do you have any questions, Burton? No. No. Then why aren't you standing in the line? I'm sorry. I just wanted to see you clearly, since your speech was so wonderful. Ma the principal watches Burton walking quietly back to the line. Huh. Burton, you are the youngest child we've ever taken in. You were just a month old when you came to the school. And by now, you've spent almost 12 years in here. Huh. I'd like to hear your thoughts since you are the most unique child in the school. Whatever the question or opinion is, I will respond with an answer. She stops. Any question? Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, Principal, I think you just opened Pandora's box with that one. Of course, as you wish. Oh god, what is she gonna ask? Hmm. What is the storm, sir? Ah. Ow, my tinnitus! Whoa! <laughs> that was wild. Hmm? May I ask, how much further do we have to go? What? Till we get to the guardhouse. What's happening right now? We're almost there. Don't worry. Uh-huh. Okay. As your punishment, no dinner will be served tonight. You will stay here until tomorrow. Someone picks you up at noon. Okay. I won't ask you how you knew that word, but you have to promise that you won't mention it again. Huh. Was that word forbidden to the kids? That's interesting. And yeah, where the hell did she learn about that? I promise. All right. Here we are. This is not some friendly place. The arcane skills I taught you before may help. I hope you have paid close attention in that class. The instructor gently pushes her back. Get inside. Think carefully, or next time it won't be just confinement. Oh, <laughs> damn. What the hell? The guardhouse. A damp, muddy room. Water keeps dropping onto the ground intermittently. The ground is covered by old footprints in disarray. Buzz, buzz. Something is wiggling in the dark. This is... The Jamir worm. Under the dim light, these worms, less than two inches, are crawling across the ground towards, towards here. So cool. <laughs> so cool. It's said that the Shamirs are marvelous creatures. Even King Solomon searched for them for years. They're incredible engravers, more skilled than the greatest craftsmen among humans. They can engrave on leaves, metal, and gemstones, build a sacred temple, or destroy a giant vessel. No! <clears throat> but now. They've become tools for punishing naughty kids. She's a nerd, but an adorable nerd. Alright. Around Shamir, uh, firstly crawls up her cough, interrupting her thoughts. It starts to do its work. Oh, it hurts. Yeah, they might be fascinating, but they hurt. There are at least a few hundred Shamirs here. A 
and they're all moving towards me. Oh, yeah. The instructor did teach two incantations to repel insects, but shamirs are not any ordinary worm. They were, in fact, a kind of advanced critter. The elementary arcane skills won't work on them, let alone there are no signs of my arcane abilities up till now. Maybe. I'm not an arcanist at all. Hmm. The second Shamir has successfully landed on the moon. They are hard-working twins. Ouch! Please don't bite me two times in a row. No, stop. I have to focus now. There must be a way I can think of. Look around. Need to find a safe spot first. Hmm. Need to find a safe spot first. Petting the... Petting the Shamirs off and looking around. A yellow wool blanket lies in the other corner of the room. No Shamirs have ever approached there. Hop to there first. <sighs> Weird. Why no Shamirs here? Hmm. These things sticking to my shoe are... Oat brands. Hmm? Looking back at where she stood seconds ago, some grains are left scattered on the muddy ground. One can hardly see these with such dim lights. I've jumped over here, but the Shamirs just keep crawling towards the grains. Seems that they are not orientated by sounds. What matters to them is the grain. But I can't stay here forever. There are food in every corner. They will get here sooner or later. Itchiness on the leg. Some Shamirs fall on the wool blanket as Burton pats them off and hastily crawl away from the blanket. Others are still wandering by the edge of the wool blanket. Um, they can't do anything to this wool blanket. Wool? Oh, so that's the case. The legend says that the way to store Shamir worms is to wrap them in wool and store them in a container made of lead. Huh. Which means the wall of this room should be made of... Lead. Pick up, picks up the wool blanket and wipes it on the wall. An off-white mark appears on the blanket. It's alloy. Quickly forming a film on the surface, this has to be lead 2 carbonate. This is poisonous to them. Well, to me as well. This is, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's lead. <laughs> it's an alloy, but it's still lead. Jeez. This is when a handkerchief comes in handy. It would make a good mask and glove. I have everything I need. Grains to lure them and walls to drive them away. The solutions are more than I expected. Hmm. <laughs> All right, let's move. Expel them to the corner. Time to deal with worms. Do I actually fight worms? Oh, creep fest. Shamirs, the foundation builder, the foundation builder among the Shamirs, the creature of wonder. Of course, Simo, Simo Chase, Simo Chase, Simo Chase. That's no idea. Doesn't work on these complacent friends at all. Their background is much more noble than normal bugs. Engraver Shamirs. The engraver among the Shamirs, the creature of wonder. Their ancestors might have contributed to the construction of the Temple of Jerusalem. So please forgive them for their occasional arrogance. Uh, same thing. Okay. Time to squash some worms, holy shit. Kinda cute? In a weird way? Anyway. I search each moment, now night. Battles have little meaning, save for the prizes to be won. Worms squished. Oh, another little thingy. Let's see. With the city builder, li uh, lead ash, wool, and grain. One of these will work on them to some extent. Drive them away. Another battle. 
Another battle. More worms. All right. This trial is mine to judge. Uh, every wall has a hole. When a character is attacked by enemies with a strong Aflatus, HP minus uh, max HP times 25%. Okay. There are many of them, but they won't be a problem as long as you know the trick. Place the wolf felt ahead. Stay in the corner for a while. Huh. Alright. What is the little thingy that is on you? Oh, hole on the wall, that's that. Okay. Alright. Let's uh, deal with you. A sword shot. Each moment, now night. Using troops. Worms successfully squished again. The tiny sound of gnawing is nowhere to be found. They have left, at least for now. Good. There is not only darkness. Hunger, silence, the dim light, and a little trouble. Aside from these elements, a standard guardhouse has to have two other things. Critters which are not too difficult for kids to handle, and tools for the kids to solve the problems. The interior of the guardhouse will be examined and evaluated regularly, and every week people will come to maintain the facilities to clean it up. However, some words in the childish handwriting were left in the room. They were written on crumpled little notes, or on the corner of the wall. Look like hints, or were left there for reasons which are unidentifiable now. For some reason, these fragments of information were never completely erased in the frequent cleanings. Huh. Interesting. Alright. <laughs> Scottish! Uh, also, wait, 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 wait. Did anything change? Nothing. Uh, so that was that. Okay. Scottish. Grease, starch, and meat. It's the fish and chips we all like. <laughs> Alright. Finally, get them all to the corner. The hmm. Hungry, Burton? I'm a bit hungry. Okay. Oh, right. I'll check what this padlock is made of and see if it can be consumed by the schmears. Checks it under the lights. Very ordinary metal. It's just a common metal lock with a bit of rust on the shackle. Hmm. I see. With plenty of food on the ground, schmears won't notice the ironware hanging above. <laughs> Time to try a brand new dish, you old gentleman. <laughs> also, that little laugh at the beginning. Hold on. Ah, can't run now. But now I can. <laughs> Time to try a brand new dish. <laughs> that 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 is a, that is a laugh. All right. Closes the door of the room and sneaks through the hallway. There is no light in here. There are two guardhouses on each side of the hallway. Pass by the rooms and the front gate would be ahead. There is no lock on the gate. Oh, hi, who's there? Who are you? A grey-eyed boy pops his head up at the cell window. Who are you? I'm the ring. I can catch anything with a toss. The ring. Look! He throws out an iron hoop, which is the size of a finger ring. The ring rolls over and clogs up Merton's shoelaces. So cool. Uh, you can open these doors, can't you? Yes. Can you help me out of here? And I swear I will be at your service. How? Cast that special skill of yours and open this lock on my door. And so you can leave without a backward glance? Listen to you! <laughs> I'm not going back in here again. No way then. 
But if you don't come back, the instructor will give us a harsher punishment. I'm just sneaking out for food. I'll be back. What would you like to have? Fish and chips. <laughs> some onion vinaigrette on the side if they have any. <laughs> no problem. I'll bring some mashed peas too. <laughs> okay, so there are more kids currently in there. Three hours later. So you managed to control the Shamirs and got out? Yes. How about you? Any odd things in your room? Nothing peculiar. Just some stinky rats. Didn't even take me long to take care of them. Okay, so more kids are in here. Well, at least these two are in here for some kind of pun punishment. He shrugs his shoulders uncaringly and takes a good bite of the fish. Mmm. The staff canteen does serve some good fish and chips. What you have in the second canteen is not even close to it. Keep missing the dressings, and sometimes it's not even cod they fried. No. Mm. So, why are you here? I said that word. <laughs> that word <laughs> whispered. What word? That word. I said at the pre parade assembly. Oh, now you're cautious of it. Oh, you mean the S word? At the school assembly? Mm hmm. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> the big head is gonna be so pissed. I don't understand. It was him who said that I can ask any questions that I want. Where did you learn that word? I heard it from the janitor of our dormitory. Huh. That was the last thing he said. Oh, the last thing he said? I saw him being escorted outside the school gate and onto a truck. Oh boy. He screamed all along. The storm is coming. The storm is coming. Um. I said it again. You did it twice. Shoot. <laughs> Never mind. Keep going. I asked many people, but none was bothered to answer. Uncle Morris said the janitor left the school at an inappropriate time and saw some inappropriate things, so he needed treat. Jesus, they're really just indoctrinating people and controlling them in here, huh? So I was right. The school is blocking the newsfeed. Yeah. What do you mean? Look at this. I snuck this up from the staff office. The world changing storm. Truth covered by the foundation. Inside information disclosed. Secret actions to har harbor vampires. Human experimentation on adapted adopted children hmm mind control on people Ooh. the world changing storm truth covered by the foundation yes he wrote about a phenomenon called the storm which will bring everybody in danger yet the foundation has stayed in silence about it we are not allowed to say that word and this is the evidence hmm the newspaper has already become soft in hand after all the flooding foldings. Some of its printings have been become blurry. Have it even become tell blurry. Us exactly what the word is either. There's a line in bold at the end of the article. Welcome to Manus Vindicte. Oh boy. What's Manus Vindicte? Don't know. Never heard of it. Something has been printed on the back too. Hmm. Let me see. Nor happiness, nor harmony, nor fame, nor pride, nor strength, nor skill in arms or arts. Shepherd those herds whom blindness makes tame. Their eyes see not one light of bright stars. Uh -huh. Man's past ways are shaded by their shame. Peans are but admiration's mirror half. All right. Tides run in blind by their ever be routine. Staining that heaven with obscene calamity. When folly wrecks wit, where do stand we? Mm -hmm. 
before a cruel whip, man who man would be. Must rule the empire of himself. In it, must be supreme. Establishing his throne. On vanquished will, quelling the challenges. Of hopes and fears, being himself alone. Well, that's an interesting poem. Hold on. Their eyes see not one light of bright stars. Man's past ways are shaded by their shame. Peens are but admiration's mirror half. Tides run in blind by their ever be routine, staining that heaven with obscene calamity. When falling wrecks wit, where do we, st where do stand we? Before a cruel whip, a man who, uh, a ma man who man would be, must rule the empire of himself. In it must be supreme, establishing his throne on vanquished will. Quelling the challenges of hopes and fears, being himself alone. Hmm. The night is quiet, yet disturbances are about to come out of the dark. Squeaks! What's going on? Great! The chips have brought in more rats! Vertin? Vertin! Do you have to drift off now? Come over and help! <laughs> you fall asleep. Hmm. Alright. Time to exterminate the rats. Oh, will you look gnarly. Rats. Are they all the same? Mutant rats and rats. Okay, normal rats. A group of rats tangled together. Oh! Are we forming a rat king? They once went through the sewers passed by the t uh, tombs. They deserve a medal for having disabled everyone's nose. Mutant rats. A group of rats tangled together or something else. Tangling tails should be the major of the wanderers in the dark, but there are always exceptions and they have nothing to do with how much one has learned. Time to kill some rats. Holy shit, you're creepy. And you're big. Time to murder! I believe in you. I saw a shot. Battles have little meaning, save for the prizes to be won. Alrighty. Also, some more stuff unlocked. <clears throat> Alright, let's see. Two new things popped up. Are you both here? Maybe. Yeah, just here for now. Let's see. Stuffed rubber. It's always hard to resist the temptation of food. They know how good fish and chips taste. Defend oil! <laughs> Alright, rats again. The, the, what? Oculi creation? A creature of management dictate. No soul resides in this empty body. That mysterious eyeball sees through everything, including death and betrayal. It is the most loyal servant of the Guiding One. Oh joy! <clears throat> oh, there it is. Attacking the uh, Oculite creation to reduce the enemy's moxie, so so as to prevent their ultimates to be cast. Oh, that's like a fourth enemy on the field, huh? Alright, enemy. The abundance of mox, uh, moxie is the foundation of the great cause. When a character enters battle and starts every round, moxie plus five. Well, them. I think the rats have found themselves a helper. That's one weird helper. That's okay, I got it. Do you? Um. Do you know? I believe in my sword shot. Hmm. 
That was certainly a toy. Let's see. And this is an alien city. Renia Sereno in Denso Ad Infinito. Trust me, it won't hurt. I see. Okay, 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 okay. So the goal should be hit it once, so the Moxie goes down by one. Okay. That is fine. I believe in you. So you're gonna hit, and you are gonna hit that thing. I know the moon, and this is an alien city. Feel it paid and know it's been. She jumped up, Jesus. A little surprise. Alright. Yep, that's the way to go. Well, let's keep this trucking then. Feel it paid and know with regret. Battles have little meaning, save for the prizes to be won. Alrighty. The smell is indeed tempting. <laughs> uh huh. Okay, what's the other thing? Ooh, a question mark. What are you? Fish and chips in the kitchen. The staff canteen is the best choice for filling the belly. Now you only need a bit more information to reach the fish and chips. Collect info. Whoa, what am I looking at? Thursday. Where are the fish and chips? Where is the peace? Uh, peace Paris. Monday. Fish and chips in the closet. Bread in the cabinet. Peas Paris in the shelf. Vegetables in the basket. Tuesday. Oh. Ah, I see, I see, I see. So I have it for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. But Wednesday is very deleted. Huh. So I'm missing... Can I click on anything on this thing? No. Alright. I'm gonna guess I'm gonna encounter another bit of paper with the Thursday stuff. Okay. Gonna remember that for now. But let's continue on to number eight. And I think after this one we're gonna be running it up for today. Scattered pamphlets. Glasses in session, I see. Uh-huh. Just just you, whatever you or whoever you are. Nothing else. Alright, let's see. Scattered pamphlets. They fall like snowflakes, bringing with it horrible news and whispers of temptation. Uh huh. Oh, back here, huh? Someone is at the door. Madam Vice President. Holding a chess piece. Holding a chess piece of Bishop in her hand. Constantine doesn't even bother to look up. Come in. Here is the Mon State Department report. Any news I shouldn't miss? The mainstream media in Europe are on our side and have no extra coverage on the issue. In fact, as long as there is no tangible evidence, they won't act upon this rashly. The storm hasn't come to this area yet. For most of the people, what Manus Vendicte has said in their pamphlets are totally unfounded and ludicrous. Constantine gets on her feet. They have been making quite a scene here and there, as I heard. Yes, residents nearby have all received their pamphlets. Even the SPDM has reported some cases. School of Primary Defense of Mankind. Affected by the time reversion, our manpower and resources have become much less than before. It will take us a long time to complete the citywide air defense system. Were these pamphlets airdropped? Yes, most of them were. Give me a visual of the aerial carriers of Manus Vindicte. Mm hmm, okay. These are Latias. Their sizes are about four to six feet, covered mostly in black. Sacoptera Kaya Olitia 04 Aerial Carrier Analysis Species Analysis The Olitia 04 is character characterized by a lightweight skeleton, developed uh, pectoral muscles and good maneuverability and explosive power. 
However, it has a high B BMR, low stamina and large water consumption. It could only be used to carry light loads within limited uh, flight range, mid and non a mild and non-aggressive. Size 4 to 6 feet. Water storage apparatus. apparatus. Water storage apparatus is the vital organ of Olitia 04, performs water storage and performs water storage and providing function. Pectoral wings. The pectoral wings of the Olitian 04 has a high density of sub... Jesus, it's hard to read this one. Subcutaneous muscle fibers and a soft epidermis that allows it to maneuver in, ver in a variety of narrow spaces. They have a similar appearance to manta rays and have good maneuverability and explosive power. Yeah, they do kind of look like manta rays. Olidia 04. This type of Olidia has limited operation range and cannot take a long haul. They are too dependent on the water. Thank you, I read that. Indeed. According to our report, they usually leave after a three hour hovering every day. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Ms. Z, where do you see fit for this bishop? Hmm. I think he should go to B5. Yes, I thought the same. Adequate for low altitude aerial reconnaissance surveys. But they are only found in the southern part of Cameroon and difficult to capture. It is a very rare arcane species. Sending this many Olidiaos on such short notice. I would presume Manus Vindicte has already established a command post somewhere nearby. I don't see how this is helpful. As they said themselves, the storm is coming. Mm -hmm. What do you say of this new command post of theirs? Like our headquarter, is a building that will not be affected by the storm. <gasps> they need to make sure that Olidis won't be affected by the storm. I think you know what to do, Miss C. Take over the initiative. Find their location. Exactly. Send a scout squad to follow the Olidiaos, and get the others to search in the water catchment areas within 100 miles from here. We are going behind their front lines, just like this bishop. <laughs> I will forward this to the secretary of the army. These, um... Per vocal performance makes her sound a tiny bit robotic. I wonder if that is intentional. Make a copy to the Pax House as well. Copy that. Or if if it's just the accent that's making it sound like that. What about the defense? There have been rumors in school. I'm worried the students might be affected. Send Zeno's Air Force trainees to the school. Affirmative. Our ladies are crafty creatures. I will pick those who are equipped with field experience. Might just be the a accent that is making it sound like that, but def definitely makes it sound a tiny bit robotic. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Constantine does not respond. She stares at the Black King on the board and broods. We are leading ourselves into a death trap. We need someone to forecast the storm. Mm-hmm. And that's gonna be Vertina. Or. Finally got to let my baby SU 01 VE out for a ride. It feels right. Whoa. This is where they train those little lab rats? Uh huh. Five canteens. Way better than that stupid Xeno. Oi! Lilia! We don't have the signal yet! You must not take off! Okay, it said earlier when it swapped away very quickly, lazy laughter comes from above. Get down here now! Nobody cares, dude. There will always be a signal. Oh, you have a portrait. Either you move your ass or swallow my exhaust. <laughs> <laughs> she leaves like a wind. This is outrageous. For once I forgot my rabbit's foot and I got assigned to team up with her. No. He looks at the lookout tower from a distance. Behind him, danger approaches, and yet he has no idea. 
Olidios, two of them, are charging toward him from his blind spot. Andrew, heads down! What? As soon as Andrew lowers his head, Lilias SU-01B rips the Olidios' abdominus with a swift and clean cut. What, where Abdominals. You You're gonna slice my head off if I weren't quick enough! Shut up and take your broom! That see those dark bats there? Let's see who come back with more trophies. Loser, loser, vodka coaster. <laughs> Boy, hey, wait up. Vodka coaster. All right, am I fighting the flying ones? Holy shite! For one for every element, huh? Primitive Volitia. The most primitive individual among the species and the one that took the most time to tame. As soon as it cries in silence, its followers will gather, an epoch making way to deliver newspaper. <laughs> it may replace the newsboys. Huh. Olitio. With an aggressive appearance, this flying critter actually has a peaceful character. Since they could not leave home, what the Manus offers is indeed a great temptation to them. Now they are free to go to the next cage. Okay. And this thing is also present. Oh boy. Well. Wow. Alright. Reduces mass damage taken for the enemy. An ally who deals one target damage is recommended in this battle. Attack the Oculi creation to reduce the enemy's moxie so as to prevent their ultimate to be released. Okay. Okay, time to fight. <clears throat> Pardon? Time to fight flying manta rays. Using troops. <laughs> Alright then. Uh huh. Hold on. We got some free stuff. Nice. Oh, what's the next thing? Oh, Sonetto stuff. Nice. Imprints. Uh huh. I actually never looked at this whole thing. There's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, alright, let's see. There is something here. Arcano military equipment list. These multi legged thieves sneak in, but they are still caught by the Falcon's eyes. Stop them! Special training ground. Hesitant creation? Am I looking at spiders here? A creation of Manus Medicte. No soul resides in this empty body. An imitator whose behaviors are like the so-called art that draws on children's crayons drawings with a uh, propylene. Okay, different text. Uh, created on a whim by someone capable in the Manus. They keep swarming out like the ants in the ground. Alright, well, let's see what this is about. Oh, good, creepy spiders. <laughs> Look at these brats. I'll take you out, uh, I'll take you out, by the way. Uh-huh. Interesting music choice. Thou shalt make an atonement for thy sins in full. Battles have little meaning, save for the prizes to be won. Spiders? Exterminatus. A piece of paper torn from somewhere. It has avoided the fate of being stolen. That's a jet. Arcanum military equipment list. Individual vehicles. An air combat broom. A <laughs> broom? An air combat broom of the SU-01BE Witch series for individual combat. With high mobility, high attack, and wide range, this arcane vehicle can bring an aerial advantage to its pilot. The series applies titanium alloy and a lancet-like design. As a result, its streamlines allow it to fly faster than any other models. Maximum level speed, 1,553 miles per hour. Beneath the main body is a wedge-shaped air inlet, which guarantees the aerodynamic performance, and there is an arcanum detector in the middle of the body. 
The broom is also equipped with the ST31 30mm Instant Arcane Skill Casting Device, at the bottom of which works with a high precision laser uh, ranging aiming system. The SU01BE Witch series was cooperatively developed by the Sukhoi Design Bureau and redacted. Experience of piloting arcane vehicles is required for its operation. Besides, the pilot must possess outstanding G tolerance as the overload brought by the excessive mobility is inevitable. For now, all the models of the SU-01BE Witch series belong to the Xeno Arms Academy and work as its main tactical vehicles. Only pilots who have been trained rigorously and systematically are qualified for piloting. Uh, kind of want to check just something. Yeah, thought so, that's unfamiliar. That is an actual plane. Well, maybe not the entire thing here that they are using with the BE and which thing, but uh, the SU-1 was a uh, prototype plane. I'm gonna put up the thing that I have here in front of me on the screen as well, so you guys can see it as well. So the SU-1 uh, Product 330 is a single-seat fighter with an M10, uh, M105P engine at 1,100 horsepower and two turbochargers TK2, armament a 20mm cannon mounted in the hollow shell of the gearbox and two Synchronous SHKAS machine guns. The design is mixed, the fuselage is a wooden semi... Uh, mononoc? I hope I'm saying that right. The wing is one piece dural, uh, duralumin, Jesus, duralumin single spar with a center section and consoles. So yeah, an actual plane. Kind of felt like I heard that SU dash something something before. I didn't play those uh, certain flight sims and battle flight sims in the past for nothing, I guess. But yeah. Interesting. Okay, I think this is where we're gonna stop for today. This is already a long enough part. Just gonna check George the Oak. Uh huh. What's the name? Anything new here? No. Okay, so just back at the back at the memory lane. All right, but yeah. Anyway, this is where we're gonna stop for today. Interesting little thingy we have here with this chapter. Burton reliving her past. Uh, some trauma, which... Yeah? She definitely experienced stuff, but it's still a weird trauma she has. Hmm. Fascinating. I wonder how this is gonna keep on going. What's gonna be the big, big conclusion here at the end when she... I guess awakes the end of the chapter? And what happened back in school? Something is gonna push her forward to become the timekeeper, and I wonder if this is this memory is gonna lead up to that, but we'll see when we get to there. For now, interesting. Also, seeing them all as little little peep squeaks is very adorable. And Matilda has not changed a tiny bit. <laughs> she is still the Try-hard super nerd, but also very, very enamored by uh, and competing with uh, Sonero, which is funny as fuck. Anyway, thank you very much, guys, for uh, watching and listening. So, as always, if you did like the video, please consider li leaving a like on it. It would help me out a lot. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. There is going to be a lot more, of course. We're going until this is done. And then, when we're caught up, we're just gonna keep keep on going whenever a new story gets added. It's gonna be a slower let's play on that front when <laughs> when eventually I get caught up, but uh, it will keep going. I am definitely definitely in in it in it to win it now. And uh, yeah, if you wanna support me and my channel more directly, there are memberships on the channel, and as always, there will be no video behind a membership. Thank you very much for the members who are already there. And, uh, yeah, hope you all have a fantastic day wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.